a lot of people, I think, will, will believe that um, some of the uncertainty has been lifted over the future of the dockyard and naval base. Some skeptics might also feel that, you know, we're losing, as the, you know, the home of the Royal Navy, we're losing a lot as well. What would you say to that? There is one area of uncertainty that remains and I'm not able to clear up to date, but Devonport will be um, the centre of excellence for uh, all of our deep refit work uh, for the uh, Royal Navy, both the submarines and the Grey Fleet. Uh, that is a huge amount of work, high value work, uh, that underpins a skilled workforce that we uh, need to keep and will keep into the future. Uh, it will also remain the centre of amphibious uh, warfare. We'll enhance that. We'll bring the Royal Marines and the uh, landing craft here. It will also remain the centre of naval training with FOST, Raleigh uh, and Dartmouth. Um, the submarines eventually will go to Faz Lane, that's true. And we are unable to give certainty about the Type 23 frigates at this point. None will move for five years. The Type 22 will stay here for the rest of its life and we will be able to answer that question by the end of the year. Once we understand the replacement for the Type 23, how complex it is and therefore where we ought to base it. When you say the, uh, the replacement, you mean the... The future surface combatant. Right. Would you mind talking a little bit about that? I mean, I'm not entirely clear on that. But that's looking to the future and, and really looking at you know the next kind of generation of ships that are coming in. Am I right in thinking that? So there's a next generation of frigates. Um, there is not going to be just one variant. Um, we're going to have to have some very complex high-end warship capability uh, there. Those will be based at Portsmouth. But the Navy needs ships. It doesn't only need extremely um, expensive complex uh, ships, it needs numbers of ships and there will be other variants to conduct other roles. Um, where they'll be based hasn't been decided, will be decided before the end of the year I think, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you mentioned about Plymouth becoming the centre of uh, excellence for amphibiosity, great word there by the way, I haven't heard that one before. Um, what does that mean? What does that mean? We've got the three amphibious warships, We've got the Royal Marines obviously here as well. Um, you mentioned before about the squadron moving down from Poole. Um, what does it mean? What are we going to see here? Large buildings? I mean, you know. Well, amphibious warfare is a huge part of the Royal Navy's capability. Um, this is already the centre uh, for those amphibious ships. They'll stay and we'll enhance the role by uh, moving the Royal Marine capability or the landing craft. Uh, as soon as we're able to into Devonport. So all of that amphibious warfare capability, Devonport will be the place uh, for it. And uh, would that mean 539 Assault Squadron moving from Turn Chapel to the naval base? It does. It does. It Any does. ideas what's going to happen with uh, Turn Chapel at this time? I'm not able to say whether or not we'll find another use for it. Um, Maybe uh, sold off. Potentially, but we'll have to look at whether or not there are other defence needs. Um, there are other um, uh, elements, Royal Marines, up in uh, pools such as the SBS. Will they be moving down to Plymouth? No decision on that. Been uh, taken. And you mentioned before when you were down visiting Plymouth that there was the possibility that 4-5 Commando up in Arbroath could also possibly move down to Plymouth um, to sit alongside, obviously, 3 Commander Brigade, 4 2 Commander. There are no plans to move 4 5 Commando from our boat. I don't think I said that before. I'm pretty sure I didn't. <laughs> um, you, is it right you visited HMS Rally earlier on today? Yes. What did you think of the, uh, of the site there, and can you confirm that HMS Rally has a, a, has a future where it is? Yes, we're already uh, modernising uh, building facilities at HMS Rally. Um, there are, you know, if anything, HMS Rally will um, will grow over time. It is the home of Royal Navy training. Uh, fantastic ethos, uh, great capability. Um, we've we've got a lot of work to do, uh, you know, in terms of the um, the, you know, the facilities. We've got to continue uh, to invest, and that's what we plan to do. Um, 
just skipping to and throwing, sorry, back to the submarines. Um, Trafalgar class, uh, there have been delays, if I'm right, in thinking to the astute program. Is it likely that the lifespan of the Trafalgar class is going to be extended? And if so, will this mean that they stay base ported here in Plymouth for the time being? Will it delay anything? Well, what we're announcing today is that the, um, the last three of the Trafalgar class uh, submarine will, after their next um, refits, uh, move to uh, Faz Lane. The other um, boats will stay here for the rest of their lives. That means that submarines will, um, base porting will leave Devonport between five and eight years. Um, so there will be no move before about five years' time, but within eight years, um, the plan is that they will have left Devonport. Um, the council leader, um, Councillor Vivian Pengeli, um, has written to you actually asking a number of questions. One of the questions uh, asked for assurances that any proposals to dismantle and store nuclear submarines in Devonport is immediately disclosed. Um, can you confirm that consultation will take place with the city? Consultation will take place with the city and, and far, far wider than that. We will have to do a strategic environmental assessment. We're obliged to do that by law and we cannot take a decision until such time as that assessment has been done. That assessment involves a consultation period and yes, of course, uh, we'll not only do the minimum that's obliged to us by law, but we try to uh, involve the city as much as we can in our planning uh, in this area. Um, finally, um, you know, the Naval Base Review was kind of announced, I think it was 2006, that's nearly three years ago. Would you apologise to the city for it taking so long? Or would you just say that these things, are, are, you know, it has taken this long because it has? I think, I think that there has been, to some degree, an unrealistic expectation about the amount of detail that we are able to give the city and... You know, the, the, you know the, how far we can push back the horizon, how far we can say, we can predict into the future. We have tried, as soon as we're able to, to be as open as we can and to disclose as much as we can and to discuss as much as we can with the city authorities. They are our partners. They are vitally important to us. We need that working relationship uh, going forward because Devonport is going to remain a very important uh, facility for us and a very important part of the of the city's economy. And you think that Devonport's uh, future is extremely bright? Yeah, I do, I do. It'll change. Uh, you know, the world will change. You know, the Navy will change. Uh, you know, we've got to specialise. We've got to be as efficient as we can. But Devonport's going to be absolutely central uh, to, you know, that, uh, you know, capability going forward. The Royal Navy depends on Devonport and is going to for many, many years to come. And you think 